Hello, I'm Neville Martin. I'm here to talk about um, single pickup guitars. I've had a bit of a flirtation with them o over the years and I, I actually really like them. A lot of people think they're quite restricted or presume they must be restricted. Um, but when you look at people over the years who've used them, like uh, Clapton with his Firebird One, Pat Travers, great uh, fan of Pat Travers I am, um, uh, Stevie Marriott in Humble Pie, he used to use a single pickup guitar sometimes, and of course we've now got Billy Joe Armstrong and loads of guys down there over the years have used them. Leslie West with Mountain, fantastic guitars. Um, and it, there's something about the tone of a, of, a, of a single pickup guitar, and it's all about the tone really of a single pickup guitar. This guitar here is a 1957 Les Paul Junior. Sadly, it isn't mine. And this probably is the, the, the benchmark, certainly one of the two main benchmarks of uh, single pickup guitarage. And it's a wonderful, wonderful machine. It's made of all the right woods. It's got a lovely 57 P90, uh, P90 on it. Sounds wonderful. And what the single pickup ethos is all about is learning how to get the most out of the guitar. You learn what the volume control can do. You learn how the volume control affects the tone. You learn how the tone control affects the tone and the dynamics of the guitar overall. Um, this guitar in the right hands, I'm not saying they're my hands, but in the right hands can give you all kinds of tones from the thickest, fattest, uh, dirty sounds to really sweet, almost acoustic sounds if you're brave enough with those controls and you need to be because that's what it's all about. Here's an example. Look, I'm going to put the tone control on three and a half. I've got the volume control also on three and a half and that really isn't a million miles away. From an acoustic guitar, that in a mix that would wouldn't offend uh, the average acoustic strummer's uh, ear. But then, if I whack that volume control right up to ten, Get that lovely, dirty. So that's volume control on 10 and tone control on three and a half. If you whack the tone up to 10. It's a really lovely, it's, it, it, there's edge to it, but the great thing about the junior is where the, where the pole pieces lie is quite away from the bridge. So it's not quite as brittle as on some, some where, where the, the pickup's very close uh, to, to the bridge saddle or, the, or the, where, where the saddles would be. Um, so you get an, an innate fatness to the guitar, so it... <laughs> I mean, anybody who knows Leslie West with Mountain, you're going to recognise that sound. It's an absolute beautiful thing, plays beautifully. And, but it's, it is all about the tone. It's, it's learning where, you know, a lot of people will just turn that, that vo volume down to, say, seven for average riff and rhythm work, you know. <laughs> whack it up for lead so there's, there's and, and everywhere on this uh, tone control is a different kind of sound and you really need to learn to work with it and forget the fact that you don't have a pickup selector switch and you can't flip to the neck pickup for this big fat fluty tone you've got to work with the guitar and it's a bit like when you when you restrict yourself in playing you know if you say I'm only going to play position one shape one uh, but I need to milk that shape for all it's worth and you actually learn to find out much more about 
a, a position on the guitar, an area on the guitar, and the same goes with single pickup guitar. You you learn what that guitar is all about and how to make the most of that guitar. So it's uh, my turn to get the grips with uh, the Holy Grail in the shape of this beautiful 1957 Les Paul Junior that you can see here. Um, first thing that springs to mind when uh, giving it a spin is just how great the neck feels. Um, this fantastic sort of chunky feel to it that's incredibly comfortable to play. Uh, dimensions are very very pleasing and then uh, over at the body end of the spectrum this beautiful kind of uh, lacquer checking pattern here um, which you know it's really nice to see something that's actually really aged um, and not uh, not kind of fake vintage uh, style relicking because um, you know there definitely is a difference when when you see it for real and it's just it's such a vibey instrument it's just uh, begs to be played really and um, so to echo a couple of things that Neville already said, um, obviously there's a huge amount of variation possible from the volume and tone controls, uh, despite the perceived limitations of a single pickup guitar. But one of the things that I really like about this as well is that um, even with everything rolled up to full tilt, um, there's a hell of a lot of range that you can get just by varying what you're doing with your right hand. So for instance, um, the sort of full throttle sound, um, you've got a very nice kind of... Very sort of nice searing kind of lead saying that's going to you know sit right up there in a kind of very present up front place in a mix but then if you take the pick away and uh, use the flesh of your uh, thumb and fingertip and play the same sort of part you can uh You can get a much kind of creamier sound, especially if you position your right hand uh, up here towards the fretboard, which is, uh, is you know it's quite a contrast to the and that's you know that's quite a lot of dynamic range there, you know, just uh, just from variation really with the right hand, and the same goes for rhythm sounds as well, because you know you've got this sort of thing. <laughs> nice kind of dark velvety smoky kind of rhythm sound and then the same sort of thing with the pick it's much more kind of strident much more rock and roll so so that kind of range before you've even touched the controls is uh, is incredibly impressive unfortunately of course as beautiful as a guitar like this is not many of us can actually afford an original 1950s Gibson but happily, there are quite a few companies who do make uh, single pickup guitars, and they've, they've all got different takes on a theme. So we've chosen four quite different instruments, all with just the one pickup, and uh, we're going to give them a spin and let you know some of our thoughts, and then uh, maybe you can make up your mind as to which one you prefer. This is a Gordon Smith uh, GS1. It's a lovely little guitar. They, they've been making these for years and years and years. Clearly, it's inspired by the double cut cutaway uh, Les Paul Jr., which is a slightly later guitar than the 57 we're playing just now. The Gordon Smith here has a humbucker at the bridge, which is a, a really nice sound. I like it because a humbucker does have a naturally uh, edgy sound to it if you if you play it in the right way. Um, this has also got a one. This particular one has got a couple of uh, optional things, which I personally wouldn't have. I don't. It's starting to over over complicate something that's a lovely, simple guitar. But they're quite good. They're interesting. They give you kind of tone preset tones and boosts and things, which I won't actually demonstrate here. I'll just demonstrate the the guitar as such. So also on the tone control, it's got a notch at the end which uh, bypasses the tone control. So with that notched. Foot full up like that, uh, the guitar, the tone's going straight out of the guitar to the amp with no uh, no tone control on it. So I'll, I'll leave the tone control in. Here it is, pretty much wide open. That's a really nice gutsy. I suppose a Clapton-y type, blues breakery, creamy era uh, tone. Like the junior, you knock the, you knock it back, it fattens up a lot. That's a lovely sound. Very vocal. And if you, I'm using, I'm not using a pick. I'm just using my fingers. You can really milk the sound of that. And you might not be inclined to do that on a two or three pickup guitar because you've got all the switches, you've got all the preset tones you can mess about with. But I love that. Pick lightly, pick hard, use a pick, use your, your fingers. 
interact with the guitar a bit more than you might on, say, a Strat or a, a, a multi-pickup guitar. But this is a really, really nice guitar. I love its lightweight. I love the fact that it's without those switches, it's very simple. A lot of people will like those switches because they do give nice, gutsy, uh, gutsier sounds. Uh, they're not for me, though, but uh, it's a great little guitar, really great guitar. So this is the Gordon Smith GS1, um, obviously handmade in the UK and uh, with prices starting around 450 quid. You can't really argue with that. Um, there's not a lot of other companies out there that can offer that kind of, uh, that kind of service. And um, while it's obviously based on a, a junior style template, uh, there's a couple of different things going on here because we've got um, a solid cedar neck and body and um, a charred ash fingerboard, um, which is obviously uh, different to vintage 1950s Gibson spec. Uh, but and it's, it's a very lightweight guitar, um, it, you know, it, it feels almost uh, almost flyaway in a way, um, but it's nice and resonant and, uh, you know, much like the uh, like the Gibson Junior, if you if you sort of go over to the fingers and, uh, and just play really lightly and mess around with the right hand position a little bit, you can, uh, you know, you get some nice soft textures out of it too, and that's before you even touch the controls. So like Nev, I probably wouldn't go for the additional switching myself because um, I think for me uh, a big part of the appeal of a single pickup guitar is the simplicity and the direct nature of it. Um, you know, but it, it's there if you want it as a custom option and, um, and we, you know, we'd applaud Gordon Smith for, for offering that sort of thing again at, uh, at such a competitive price point. The only thing um, I would say is that for somebody who's six foot two like me, um, a guitar as compact as this does feel a little bit like um, strapping on a lollipop or a banjo or something. But um, having said that, due to the construction, you, you can't argue with the upper fret access. It's absolutely fantastic. And um, it's no wonder that people have used Gordon Smith guitars for slide over the years, because um, for that sort of playing style, it does give you absolute access to, uh, to everything that you're going to need up at the dusty end as well. This is Dave Bucket Colwell's signature Fret King. It's an eclat. It's, it's, it's actually, they've always made good sounding guitars. We've never really found a Fret King that we, we didn't like the sound of. As usual, um, Trev Wilkinson's tweaked it around a bit. You can see where this comes from because there's one not a million miles from it that we played earlier on. Um, but he's tweaked around. He's put an armrest in there that he wants. It, it's, you know, that might be a bit more comfortable. He's sharpened up the, the, the horn there. He's nicked a bit out of that. Uh, the, the P90 is in a very similar place to the Junior, so it's quite far forward, which will give the guitar an inherent fatness that uh, the humbucking guitars, where the pickups nearer the bridge, don't quite have. Again, it's, it's a very recognisable kind of sound. <laughs> Back the tone. If you knock the volume right back again. That's quite a nice there's quite a nice jangle to that sound. It's a nice guitar, it's quite heavy. It's, I think it's heavier than the Les Paul Jr. But that will give it That'll give it a bit of added guts. This, in a way, this sounds to me like you expect a P90 guitar to sound. It's got that slightly nasal quality to it. It kind of does what it says on the tin, really, this one, I think. But it does sound good. You, you'd, you'd have a great time with this. No, no add-ons. There's none, none of Trev's very coil stuff going on here. It's a simple tone control. Uh, so you, you, you know what you get with this guitar. And it works really well. So over to the Fret King then. And uh, obviously we're in very much uh, Les Paul Junior derived territory here, albeit with a few bites taken out of the uh, original body shape. And you've got the, the forearm chamfer which uh, we're not really too sure what to think of it aesthetically, but it certainly does make for a, a comfortable feel with the, the arm traveling over the top there. And um, round at the end of the neck, you've definitely got improved access thanks to this slightly different cutaway shape here and this, uh, this bite here, which almost makes it a double cut guitar, but uh, not quite sort of a single cut and a half, if you like. And um, tonally, we're in similar territory to the Junior. I think... Um, 
is slightly more nasal quality to it, as Nev mentioned. Uh, you haven't quite got that kind of raucous, balls to the wall sort of rock and roll vibe that you get out of the Junior, and maybe some of that's uh, due to the poly finish kind of inhibiting some of the natural resonance in a way that the nitro on the Les Paul Junior, the, the aged wood, obviously that's a very different animal. But you can get some some really good sounds out of this. So uh, sort of full throttle, you've got this. <laughs> You know, and if you're, you're doing sort of any kind of uh, rootsy, raw rock and roll music, there's not a lot wrong with that at all. And again, you know, without even touching any of the controls, if you just back off a little bit with the right hand and use fingers, you can get, you know, really nice velvety sort of lead textures as well. Guitars don't really get much cooler looking than this. This is the Eastwood Airline 59, and it's a lovely single coil guitar. It looks brilliant. It's got a chambered mahogany body. Uh, obviously, the original ones would have been a, a kind of plastic fiberglassy type thing. Uh, but that's a really, really cool looking guitar. It's actually, although it's a humbucker housing, there's a single coil inside there. So it just has a single volume control, no tone. But I think it was Eddie Van Halen that said, your volume control is your tone control. And he's right, because you watch this. That's flat out. As soon as I knock that back, note how the treble vanishes. So that, that's a lovely sound there. That's a really nice sound in that position. Again, it cleans up really nicely when you turn it down. Slightly weird positioning of the of the control here. I, I wouldn't get along with that very well, but with a guitar like this, it's all about the looks and you get round those obstacles as certain people we know well have done. Um, it's a great guitar actually, and it does sound nice. So as Nev suggested, this is a different kettle of fish altogether from uh, the previous guitars. You've got no tone control. You've just got the volume control for tonal variance. And uh, you know, there's obviously a big Jack White thing going on here because of his use of uh, vintage airlines for, for quite a number of years in the White Stripes. And certainly for that sort of bold, big rock and roll sound, then uh, it, it's a great platform for that. So let's hear some of that. <laughs> Or maybe, you know, for a little bit of the sort of garage blues thing as well. Kind of the scruffier the better. I kind of, <laughs> I reached down then to go for the volume control, expecting it to be that by there as it, you know, usually would be on almost any other guitar. But of course, it's all the way back there, which is, uh, is a little bit fiddly. But as ever with these kind of pawn shop sort of... Uh, guitars, that kind of aesthetic, you do have to compromise a little bit, you know, and it's a, it's a little bit of style over substance here. But um, having said that, it does sound absolutely great for that sort of thing. And the single coil uh, wolf in sheep's clothing, sheep in wolf's clothing, single coil in a humbucker housing does give you that extra top and that extra bite, which you maybe wouldn't get out of a full size humbucker with this kind of scale length. Here we have a classic series Esquire from Fender. This is the other um, famous single pickup guitar and it's kind of the opposite to the Les Paul Junior. The Les Paul Junior clearly is the big fat raunchy guitar. This is the Twangson Beast. Um, so it's essentially a Telecaster without the neck pickup. Um, but Fender have done some clever things with the switching uh, so that it actually, it actually gives you more than you might think. So with the selector in the middle position, it's it's classic Tele style bridge pickup. So the volume control works. And the tone control works. If you put it in that position, that defeats the tone control so it's a very sharp, bright sound. Can't do anything with it. If that's that's what you get. You can tweak tweak the volume so it does change things quite a lot.
I think that's what people think a Tele Bridge pickup or Esquire Bridge pickup sounds like. In this position, it's a kind of, it's a pseudo neck pickup tone really. They've stuck a couple of capacitors and a resistor in there. And it's quite a, a usable sound actually, you might, possibly more than you might think. So it's quite a sweet sound. Quite chunky old thing, it's got quite a big neck on it. But let's use it as the kind of telly bridge pickup here. So. It's not as much power in this pickup as the other, as the other guitars that we've got because they're naturally more uh, beefy kind of uh, affair. But it's really nice. The great thing about the, the the Esquire also is that you can do things that you can it works great with pedals so you can you can fatten that up with pedals and give it more guts with pedals and of course you know it's cheaper to change one pickup than it is to to change uh, three so uh, if that's another option but it's a great guitar and, and 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 again just like the other ones if you learn to use this guitar as, as it's meant to you milk the, the tones you use different picking ideas and you you learn where different things on the tone control and volume control react with with the guitar you can get a whole load of a whole load of stuff out of the guitar like this so over to the Esquire then and much like Nev I'm in very very familiar territory here I've gigged an Esquire you know I'm a, I'm a Telecaster fan so everything about this guitar is immediately very very appealing and um, the aesthetic which of course dates back to 1950 um, I still think these are you know some of the coolest most beautiful electric guitars ever made so despite the visual simplicity, it's something of a Trojan horse because of the uh, tricky stuff that's going on with the wiring. And the great thing is you can set it up for a nice rhythm sound with still with uh, plenty of bite, sat in the middle there, roll the tone back a touch maybe, and then it gives you an easy way to bypass that tone control, flick that switch, and that's a really good way to get a little bit of extra top end and bite again then for the lead sound. So you might do something like this. <laughs> Clearly, if the option were to take away the Les Paul Jr, I would have that, but sadly I can't because my mate Dave Burlock owns it and he wouldn't let me near it. Well, he has let me near it, but he wouldn't let me have it. Uh, so of the remaining guitars, I would take the Esquire. Um, because I love tellies, I love the telly, whole telly ethic, I love the single pickup ethic. If it were mine, I'd probably beef the pickup up with something else uh, and I'd probably put brass saddles on it. But it's, this would be a great working guitar. It's one of those guitars that you can pimp a bit if you want to, because it's basically asking for it. Uh, I quite fancy having a go on a, an Esquire again for a while, so I might have a chat with Fender about this. Okay, so while every single day of the week my heart would say that I would take the Les Paul Jr., unfortunately my wallet says no. Um, so realistically it's got to be a toss-up between these two guitars. Now, the airline is just a fantastic brash platform for garage rock and uh, all sorts of other kind of uh, indie and grunge styles and things like that. Um, I would possibly worry that people thought I was a little bit of a Jack White wannabe. Um, I don't think you can really take that artist association away from this. And, you know, while I'm a big fan, I probably wouldn't want to sort of paint myself into a corner too much stylistically. So I think all things considered, I probably would go for the Esquire. I've, uh, I'm a big Telecaster fan. I've gigged the Squires in the past and had a really good time with them. Um, and I think this guitar would be a really good platform for modding as well, because like Nev, I'd probably replace that bridge pickup with uh, something with a bit more of a broadcaster spec, just to give it more punch. And um, although Fender did use steel saddles on tallies in the mid-50s from 1954, um, I'd probably prefer the sound of the early 50s brass saddles, and I think that that would help give it a little bit more sort of a little bit more bite, a little bit more girth as well in, in all the right places. So uh, so it's a difficult choice because all of these guitars are really, really good and they have a lot to offer. But if I was going to spend cash on a new guitar, I'd probably go for the Esquire purely because it's so familiar. It's such a good platform for modifications and I know that I'd have a really good time with it.